All right, and so charge account, right? Number set. So this is this process over here, right? This, what we've done here is the same as trying to create. I'm going to use a comment to create an integer number called numbers here. This is the it's called number. This is the type int, and this is the name of the variable number. You can think of this as a type, which is charge account, and you can think of this as a name of a variable. But when you try to create a variable this way, Java is going to realize that this charge account is not one of the primitive data types. It's not a double, it's not a character, it's not a boolean, it's not uh, um, a float, it's, you know, it's, not, it's, not, it's not an integer. Java is going to know that and say, okay, you are trying to create a special kind of variable. So it's going to look in your folder to see if you have a charge account class in there. And in, in this case, I'm I happen to have a charge account class in my folder. I'm going to save it in my folder where I'm going to save this program too. And so when it finds it, it's going to say, okay, you're trying to create a variable that's going to reference a charge account object. And so it's going to reserve this variable to reference a charge account object. That's all we've done here. We've created a variable that's going to hold. It doesn't hold it yet, but it's going to hold a charge account object. And so now let's create the charge account object and store it in the number set. Let's store its location in the number set. And so number set is going to be equal to a new charge account. So now we are creating the object itself, a new charge account uh, like this. We don't have to specify an argument because we didn't we didn't define the constructor to accept any argument here. And so Number set is going to be called to new a new charge account. We, that's what we're doing. Current charge account object. That's what we're doing. And so we have number set to play with. And so we know the number set has um, a method that that checks ch check number for presence. That checks a number to see if that number exists in the number set in this number set. And so we can work with it. The program said that. Um, the question said, write the program that tests this class by asking the user to enter a charge account number. So we are going to ask the user to actually um, type in a certain number, right? Let's just use, let's use a G option pane. Okay, let's use a G option pane for this one. All right, so um, to use a G option pane, I'm going to import, right? I'm going to import, the G we need to go ahead and import the G option pane class and so we can work with it. So the G option to import it, it's going to import Java X dot swing j option pane um, the j option pane now with the j option pane we don't have to to, to declare an ob uh, create an object we can just go ahead and use the methods um, in the j option pane class right and so i'm going to um, well i've created an object i'm going to ask the user to go ahead and type in a number to check and so i'm going to use the Joption pane show input dialog to to prompt or ask the user to type in a number to check to see if it's a valid account uh, account number. And so do I use that? Do I do that? Is Joption pane dot show input dialog right? And the input dialog is basically going to take a message. What what is going to be displayed to the user right? And ask for input. I'm going to say please enter a number now whatever the g option pane show input dialog returns right it's going to return so this is going to basically show this message to the user and allow the user to type in something and whatever the user types is going to be returned as a string when it's being returned as a string we need a place to store it the g option pane always returns a string no matter what happens even if the user types in a number it's going to return that number as a string so first of all let's create a string variable here and then let's call it user input string, right? And so when that string is being returned, let's go ahead and store it in user input string here, right? But the thing is, if the user we need a number, we are working with a number here. Please enter a number. But it's being returned as a string. This is going to be a string. We can't work with strings the way we want to work with this program. We we can't really work do calculations on string or you know we can't really work with strings the way we want to do here. Actually. Actually, this will work, um, but then let's let's see. Um, yeah, let, let, let's it, it's fine. Let, let's just let's do that. Uh, we, based on our program, I think it will work if we if we keep it as a string. You know, it's really, um Let's see. Yeah, it, it's it, it it may work, but let's convert it to an integer, integer and and work with it. And so, input user input string contains a, 
a string, right? Let's let's convert it to a number, right? And so the way we do that is to use one of Java, Java's wrapper classes. Okay, and so I'm going to call integer dot pass int. And what am I passing into an integer? Okay, what am I passing into an integer? It's, it's basically the content of user input string. And so I am passing the content of user input string to an integer. And when I do this, I need to terminate it. It's going to return the content of user input string converted to an integer. It, I need a place to store it. And so I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to, it's going to be an int integer. Since it's returning an integer, I need to create an integer variable. I'm going to say user input, right? User input. And user input, well, I'll just say user number. Just so it doesn't, not a confusing name. User number. And user number is going to store what, what the user is going to type converted, first of all, as a string converted to an integer. And so now we have the user number to work with. Now I can create an if statement to check to see if that user number exists in the uh, array, right? Or exists in the number set object that we created here. And so we can say that if number set dot, we can actually use the method we created in the class, which is check number for presence. If number set dot check number for presence. And we know that number set uh, dot check number uh, check number for presence accepting a number which we're going to give like accepting a number and it's going to take basically compare each of the uh, numbers in the array to see if it matches the number given and if it does it's going to return true if it uh, if it doesn't then it's going to return false and so we are saying if number set dot check number for presence and what number are we checking for presence we're checking the user's number okay the one that has been converted to an integer we're checking that one. And so we know that once we use this method, check number for presence, and give it a number, user number, we know this method call here is either going to return true or it's going to return false. We don't have to explicitly say that if this whole thing is equal to true, although you can, you don't have to. So I'm going to delete this. We know that this call here, method call here, is either going to return true or false. And when it returns true, then the statement here in this if part is going to run. If it returns false, then this if part doesn't run. And if it if it has if this has an else part, that's going to run. And so if number set dot check check number for if number set dot check number for presence, use a number, right? If it's if if, if this number exists, then it's this whole call, call is going to return true. And if it returns true, we want to basically display a message. Right? I'm going to use G option panes show message dialog to display the message right and the option pane show message dialog takes in a couple of arguments first of all i'm going to type in now which means that the dialog box that's going to be displayed on the screen is going to be centered and the second argument is what i want to display and i'll say that the number right since i have the number here right I, in user number i can even display it in my string and say the number and I can say user number. I can co concatenate it with more strings and say um, exist in the array, or, or exist, or basically is a valid is a valid account number. Else, right? We know that if this whole thing doesn't return true, right? Then it returns false. Now we know this. We know this method call here returns true or false. We know that, right? And so we don't have to, like I said, ex explicitly say if it's, if this is equal to false, right? It's going to return true or false in a way, and this will work. But we don't want to do that. Oh, sorry. If it's equal to true, we don't want to, we don't want to do this. <laughs> My typing is bad. We don't want to do this. Although it will work, but we don't. You know, we know this whole thing here was going to return true or false, and when it returns true, this statement is going to run. When it returns false, the else part is going to run. And so, if the if this returns true, then display the number user number is is a valid account number. The number is valid, indicating the number is valid. Else, okay, if it's not true, if it's anything other than true, so meaning if it's not, it's a boolean boolean value. It's, if it's it's either true or false. If this is not true, then it's false. And so, when it's false, which is else, if it's not true, if it's anything other than true, right? If it's not true, then it's false. 
then we want to display a different message right and, and just say that um, oops what should I do hold on we want to say that the number user number is not a valid account number right that's all we want to do finally anytime you use a G option pane right and you're done we, we want to go ahead and call system dot exit and pass in the value zero now anytime you use a G option pane an, um, a task an extra task is started known as a thread right and so system dot exit terminates that thread and I'm passing in the number zero here and this zero is going to be passed to the operating system okay it's going to be passed or sent to the operating system and if the operating system is able to uh, receive this zero it's normally an indication that the program runs successfully right and so that's what the system on exit does and so now we're done let's try this and see what happens I'm going to compile this and save it this program in the same location where the class itself is and as long as you save you know the program where the class is they should be able to see each other and work with each other so save this um, it looks to it look to it look to compile well with no problems and so let's run it oh, oh, oh we haven't uh, well yeah we are going to it's going to ask the user okay please enter a number I'm going to enter four and hit OK and now it says the number four is not a valid account number we are dealing with these we're dealing with these numbers here right and we just typing in a number to see if that number is part of these and so let's run this again and check I'm going to type in a number let's say five five six six seven eight you know and hit OK and it says the number this is not a valid account number but let's copy something like this compile well, I mean I don't have to compile it run it and I'm going to paste in that number. It's in the array, right? So I'm going to paste it. This is in the array. So when I hit OK, now it says the number 877. This 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 number is a valid account number. Let's try a couple more. I'm going to type in, let's say, something like this. Hit OK. Okay. I think we. I went. I went over the the length of it, right? Over it saying, oh, let's see. For input string, for your format ex ex exception, I think I I think I either added a string or something. I'm not sure. Uh, and I think I went over over it. Let me see. Hold on. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. I think I went over the the limit. Uh, later on, we have to restrict it. No more format exception. Exactly. I think I went over the um, limit. The limit. Um, all right. And so let's let's stay within it. All right later on like I mean if you're writing a full program you check all these but for now we're just entering numbers to, to see if, it, if if it works here so hit OK and it says the number this number is not a valid it's not one of these numbers not valid let's try another number that's in it something like this I'm going to copy it run this program paste it hit OK and it says the number is a valid account number let's try another one The number of this is a valid account number. Try again with something that's not. One last time. Hit OK. The number of this is not a valid account number. And so it, we can see that this program is working. I don't think we missed anything. Yeah. And so we're done. All right. If you have any questions, please comment down below and I'll do everything to respond to them. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with the next, pro uh, with the next program. All right, then. Bye-bye.